Welcome everybody back here to the Cayman Islands Classic. I'm Scott Colletti along with Kyle Yeomans. We had an outstanding first game here of day two. Coming up next, the semifinals of the main bracket. It is the New Mexico State Aggies and the South Florida Bulls. This one should be an outstanding game. You had a couple of teams yesterday that got victories. New Mexico State first beating Colorado State in overtime and South Florida outlasting Loyola. And when you look at these two teams, Kyle, a couple of good players, Jabari Rice leading the way for New Mexico State along with an outstanding player for South Florida as well. Yeah, first two or first meeting between these two squads for the first time in program history and coming from two different directions. New Mexico State surviving a long comeback from Colorado State ended up going into OT. Jabari Rice took over in overtime a total of 21 points for Jabari Rice and all of a sudden the redshirt sophomore just took control of the game despite giving up a couple points late to Colorado State and the 12 points in overtime helped lead the Aggies to the win in what was an impressive showing for New Mexico State in overtime to take the win against the Colorado State team that we just saw have a big win in come from behind fashion against the Loyola Ramblers. On the other side, though, it's all about the South Florida Bulls and what they're able to do defensively. My goodness, they forced some turnovers, and those turnovers were on display yesterday. 26 turnovers forced, and then they shot the rock pretty well, too, from the outside. The Bulls only with six turnovers forced against Loyola Chicago in the first half. They then exploded for 20 in the second half. And that man right there, LaQuincy Rideau, redshirt senior, guard out of West Palm Beach, Florida. He was unbelievable. 17 points, five assists, and four steals. He's one of the best at dishing the rock and then pickpocketing the rock from the opponent at the same time. He is a huge playmaker for South Florida and is going to play big dividends today. And the thing about Rodeau yesterday is he was cold early and just kept shooting, got his rhythm, and then he was almost unstoppable. Yeah, once he really got started, he was tough to stop. And that's kind of how this tournament has gone so far. Looking at the schedule today, this one at 1.30 getting started, and then we've got a little bit of a break before the nightcap. Old Dominion, Washington State, to see who's got a date with Colorado State in the Constellation Bracket Championship tomorrow morning. And then George Mason in Nebraska will play the winner of this one a little bit later tonight. It's been a action-packed week already. And we're almost halfway through, and it's crazy to think that we've still got seven more matchups of Division I top-notch basketball to come here from the Cayman Islands, Scott. Yeah, and the one guy we talked about, Jabari Rice, the one guy we didn't talk about was Trevlin Queen in 40 minutes of work yesterday, 19 points, 7 of 17 shooting, and he had an outstanding game. It is the Cayman Islands Classic. It is... New Mexico State and South Florida will have it next on Flow Sports. Welcome back here to the Cayman Islands Classic. It's the Aggies and the Bulls. Outstanding semifinal in the winner's bracket. And should be a good one, Kyle Yeomans and our crew doing a great job here. It's day number two, it's game number two. I'm looking forward to this game. Yeah, and I think the guard play is something that we definitely gotta keep an eye on. I mean, we've already mentioned the, the likes of Rice and 
Queen for New Mexico State and then Rideau for USF. But David Collins also had a magnificent game yesterday. You've got uh, Justin Brown who can throw it down from the outside. Just a, a whole cast of characters. And South Florida is going to start four guards today, three for New Mexico State. But even uh, one of their forwards, C.J. Bobbitt out of Colleen, Texas, he's kind of a guy who New Mexico State will use in that stretch four type of mentality. And so... Uh, tons of guard play, tons of perimeter action in this one, and it's going to be fun to see who will be in the championship game tomorrow night with a chance to take home the trophy. Nice little crowd section for both teams, making a lot of noise. And the Aggies yesterday, their fan base was singing the fight song. <laughs> we haven't heard the fight song yet, but it's Not still yet. a great contingency of that Aggie squad. And the Aggie faithful got back to three and three yesterday. It was the first game played underneath Chris Jans uh, under 500. It was the only time in his entire tenure with the Aggies over three seasons that he had had an under 500 record. Well, he's back to three and three. He doesn't want to go back under 500. And in order to do that, they're going to have to find a way to, to slow down USF and the Bulls, one of the top defensive units in the entire country. Entered yesterday sixth in the country, in, sixth in the country rather, if with over 20 points per game, they're 20 or 20 turnovers per game, but their 26 turnovers yesterday upped it to 21.2 on average. That's now fifth in the entire country. This is a, a Florida Bull or South Florida Bulls team that's going to really force you to take care of the basketball. You see Yvonne Aorokoachea uh, being introduced. He's number 15, Trevlin Queen, number 21. Sean Buchanan, Terrell Brown, and C.J. Bobbitt. The other starters, Chris Jans, third season out of Loris College at New Mexico State. Now the home team, the host team being introduced. And David Collins out of Youngstown, Ohio, he had an outstanding game yesterday. Yeah, he really did and put up some solid numbers for the Bulls. 21 points on 7 of 10 shooting from the field, but a lot of his output came from the free throw line was able to get to the line on a multitude of occasions had seven of 12 from the charity stripe still not the percentage that a guy like collins would like to see but he's an all conference second team honoree for a reason it's because he challenges the defenses to foul him he gets to the free throw line and he made the second most free throws in american athletic conference history Last year with 206, he's off to a pretty good start this year as he's already put up 26 in just the first five games of the year. All right, we mentioned the fight song. There they go. They waited till the <laughs> introduction of the starters until they sung it. I like that. That's the only fan base that has done that here in the tournament, but they love their fight song. And I've been at the Pan American Center, their home base, many, many times, and the place pretty much erupts when the fight song goes off it's definitely a fan favorite and it gets this team riled up as well this is going to be a fun matchup guard play galore on both sides and whether it's queen or whether it's rideau this is going to be probably one of the best matchups we've seen in a tournament full of incredible matchups a jumping center along with durr it's one by durr here's rideau Rideau gets by Buchanan. Good feed inside and a flush right off the get-go by Michael Durr. He wins the tap and wins the slam. <laughs> Another great feed from Rideau. That's exactly what we talked about. One of the top assisters in the entire country. One of three players last year with 100 assists and 100 steals throughout the course of the regular season. He can do it on both ends of the floor. Aggies now with the ball. The other way in their road black uniforms. Aura. Koachea misses, Durr with the rebound. Kind of like the physicality from Durr there, not backing down from Ara Koachea underneath. Aore Koachea on the defense, Durr on the offense, and Aore Koachea gets a rebound. You know, Trying to say that twice. Yeah, exactly, and it, it's obvious early on, South Florida, led by Brian Gregory, really making it a point to get it down low to Durr. They think they have a physicality advantage down low. Buchanan on Dawson. Queen had it. Now on the three ball is Bobbitt. Bobbitt hits. 
Good ball movement by New Mexico State to get that three. We talked about Bobbitt in the open, and he plays like a stretch four. He can knock that down. Yesterday had a solid look from the outside. He's not afraid to pull the trigger. That time he does so, and it knocks it down from long range. It's a good way to get on the board first. Kick it inside. Double team. Shot put up by Durno. Dur strip. Taken away by Buchanan with the quick hands. Here come the Aggies. Third straight possession. They tried to get it to Durr. Queen for three. That's short. South Florida coming right back. Rideau. Rideau cuts down the middle against Aore Coach and scores with the left hand. Just a good drive and a good finish. Too easy for Rideau on the left side of the lane. No backside help as he lost Buchanan in the shuffle. Buchanan got caught behind his own man and Aracoachea right on the low block. And because of that, it was a wide open lane right in the middle for Rideau. Bobbin with the ball. Buchanan now with it. Aore Kuchea with the ball. They got it back. Here's Bobbitt. Bobbitt with the black headband today. Buchanan on the drive. Shot clock going down. They feed it out. Here's a three ball that will be off the mark. Brown took it, but the rebound is stuck back. Good play there by Bobbitt. And Bobbitt, he's up. And his team is up by one, five to four. Bobbitt crashing in for the board and then able to put it back just in the right position at the right time. You got to do a better job of boxing out if you're USF. And layup try is no good. Offensive foul anyway. I'd be interested to take another look at this. Here it is. And I don't know how that was an offensive foul. No feet set all the way through. I think Terrell Brown. Got a benefit of a call that time. I think that really could have been a blocking foul. One of the few misses we've seen from a very well officiated tournament throughout the first two days so far. Lots of contact on both sides, but I think with the feet moving, you got to call a blocking foul. Queen fed it out top to Brown. Buchanan with the shot clock down. Here's Brown. Brown has to hurry. He's got three. Orecoche had it stolen away from him. Good defense by Anton Mars Marisevic. Marisevic got it, and here's Rideau with a three. And that was a bomb by Rideau. You could see that look in his eyes. Rideau from downtown. Doesn't matter how far out it is. He is ready to pull the trigger, and that time he drains it putting South Florida back up on top. Foul called. That's going to be a defensive foul, and that's going to be a media timeout here. 15-59 to play in the first half. South Florida by a bucket. New Mexico State has a score seven to five here. You look at Chris Jans talking with his team. And Jans, we mentioned it yesterday, Kyle, an outstanding coach, an outstanding teacher. Yeah, and a 61 and 14 record in his time with New Mexico State. They were 20, 27 and three inside 
WAC play, and that's pretty impressive. He's undefeated in his tenure in the WAC Conference Tournament, two straight tournament titles, two straight NCAA tournament appearances, and he's now 6-2 in these preseason tournaments with New Mexico State. He has really turned around that Aggie program and uh, done a really nice job and kind of emerged as one of the better coaches on the, at least in the uh, mid-major side of college basketball. Aore Corchea at the line. And he can't get it on the first. I like how active Ari Colchea has been today. Pure physicality in the lane. They call him the Spaniard. He's able you to train that, that name, one. Phil. I love that. I think that's impressive. Anytime you can take on the name of your nationality, then you're doing something right. You're the Spaniard. That's like being called the American. I would take that 100 times. <laughs> Near steal by Queen. Still with the ball, Dawson. Rideau, don't leave him alone or you'll pay. Down to seven. Justin Brown, nice little cut in the lane. A left-hander is short on the ground. Metasevich tries to get it. He does. It goes on the base and out of bounds to New Mexico State as Dawson couldn't control. Yeah, just out of control all the way through. It seemed like that ball never got above the waistline of anybody on that South Florida offense. And because of that, if you're skipping it around underneath your teammates, it's going to be even tougher to reel in, and that time just off of the hands of Dawson and out of bounds. Couldn't handle the hot pass. Aore Koachea on the post up, a little hook too strong to the left. And that'll be South Florida ball. Seems like neither side has really found a rhythm yet. New Mexico State, two of six from the field, and South Florida has turned it over a total of three times already. This is not necessarily an offensive bout so far. We're almost, or we're past the five minute mark here in the first half, and neither side has really found any kind of rhythm on offense. Rideau. On the drive now, ran over a man, offensive foul. He did make the basket, but it will come back. And Rideau is showing right there, Kyle. Not only is he a long-range sniper, but he can drive and got maybe a little out of control right there on a bang-bang play. Yeah, he is not afraid to drive right in the middle of the heart of that defense. And whenever you're a shooter who can also shoot 50% from the field, and that's where he's at right now, there's a reason why. He's an All-American Athletic Conference first teamer and really puts up some incredible numbers, both on the offensive end and on the defensive end. It's because he's versatile. Speaking of numbers, watch out for this guy, number 10, Jabari Rice. He's on the drive. Double team, they block it. Marasevich got the block. Here comes South Florida. Dawson to Castaneda. Castaneda out of Chicago, Illinois, played a smooth game yesterday. Here's Dawson in the corner. A three ball in the corner pocket for Dawson. He just slipped wide after a screen up top. Really opened things up for the Bulls and a nice job recognizing that by Castaneda and getting the ball to his playmaker. Rice in the lane. Bobbitt on the cross court, Williams on the base, bad pass, intercepted. Here comes David Collins, one-on-one -on -one against Queen. Slams it home with the right hand. I thought he was gonna switch hands and just kind of lay it up, and instead he just went boom with the right hand right over Queen. Here comes Rice on the other end. Nifty shot off the mark, and the rebound grabbed by Dawson. And that was smart by Edwards, or Collins, excuse me going up against Queen, and I think, like you said, he was gonna switch hands, but he had to go with the right hand and stay strong. Clayton Henry, oh, check that, that's not Clayton Henry, that is Rashawn Williams. Number five is Clayton Henry of New Mexico State. He is not playing because of injury. Had him on the mind, here's 
New Mexico State trying to get back into the game. Rice. Good feed to McCanns. Out it goes to Williams, and Williams cans a three. That gets them right back within three, and the Aggie bench likes it. Williams with eight points yesterday, hit a couple of those from downtown, including two in the first half of yesterday's win. That time, just found his way open and was able to drain it. You're not going to get a better look than that. No. Great release. Just everything was good. There's a bump. They let it go because it's far out away from the basket. I like that aspect. Here's a drive and a beauty by David Collins, the junior out of Youngstown, Ohio. I like that from Collins. That's a strong take going in, welcoming the contact and throwing it off the glass. Three on the way by Trevlin. Queen is off the mark, and here comes South Florida. Dawson to the basket. Little short. Long rebound. Chase down. Boy, that's great hustle by Sean Williams. That Williams just... brings it into the front court. McCants all the way to the basket. Missed the bunny and a foul on New Mexico State. McCants, you look at his face. He knows he did not do what he wanted to do. Timeout on the court. 11.30 to play, five-point lead, South Florida on Flow Sports. Five-point lead for South Florida right now. Scott Colletti along with Kyle Yeomans. Game number two of day two. Semifinal number one in the winner's bracket. And it's been a good one so far, South Florida, with the slight edge. Yeah, and they've done it via the shooting, getting really good looks, close to the bucket, not afraid to drive in against this New Mexico State squad. And you look at Rito, two of two from the field. Collins as well with two buckets on two tries. I mean, they're shooting above 54%. And anytime you can shoot that, especially from three, where they're two of three from beyond the arc, you're going to do yourself some favors. Rebounding well, out rebounding. New Mexico State, nine to four. Seven of those nine coming on the defensive side and snuffing out a lot of those different rebounds and what could turn into possessions for New Mexico State, and that's why South Florida has been able to build an early lead. Roshan Williams out there now, along with Collins, Rideau. Castaneda with the ball now. Durr is out there, three is on the way. Durr trying to fight for the rebound, and he is fouled on the play. That's just good tenacity by Durr, keeping good position in the lane. And they're going to call that on Terrell Brown. Just kind of got locked up there. As you see, Brian Gregory not happy with the call. Thought it could have gone both ways. On the right wing, Castaneda with the three. McCants got the rebound. New Mexico State with the ball. They are down 14-9. Sean Williams out of Little Rock, Arkansas, a junior. McCants, he's a good post-up player, tried to pass it in to Rice, and it was kicked. But before the kick, they call a foul. So foul is called on South Florida. 
South Florida with the lead. Rice. Screen out by William McNair, a redshirt freshman out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, number 24, first appearance. Here's Sean Williams. Now McCants for three, got it. He hit his first yesterday, he hit his first today. What happened in between yesterday, that's another story. Hopefully <laughs> for him, he can keep up, but he made his first. Yeah, he made the first one yesterday, like you said, but then he missed his next two tries from beyond the arc. This time, has that confidence again, straight away lines it up and then knocks it down. And that one is a miss. Here comes McCants, bad pass. It was tapped out of bounds. But it went off of David Collins. It remains Aggie ball. That is what makes this South Florida defense so stingy. They disrupt passing lanes better than really the majority of the country. Whether it's Collins or Rito and even Castaneda, they will jump in front of the pass and knock it away. And they don't even have to really get a good hand on it. As long as they get a fingertip or two, should be able to jar that one loose and potentially send it to another white jersey. And one. Buchanan taking it all the way. The man out of Durant, Mississippi, six foot 170. Look at this. Wow, that is an impressive play, splitting the defenders. And he says, hey, cash it. And one. And the thing that was a little off camera, following the play, Buchanan turns around and he goes directly to the half court line and is coaching up Will McNair. That's what a senior leader does. That's exactly what Buchanan is. Leads the team in assists per game. He helps out his teammates, and then whenever he needs to take it himself, he will. It's one of the reasons why he's got a couple points per game, but he's really about the team aspect of it all, and he sh showed it there. And look at this. All of a sudden, the Aggies with a one-point lead over South Florida. We have a whistle and a South Florida player shaken up. Xavier Castaneda. Yeah, Castaneda. Fall, or fell earlier, it looked like he rolled up an ankle, trying to get back up and get in the middle of the play, but he was hobbling on one leg, so the official on the far side decided to call time. Now he can put some pressure on it. As you see it there, right into the left of your screen, right back behind Terrell Brown, but he stays in the ball game. Collins on Brown, a three ball off the mark. That is a tough rebound by McCants, who can do that all night. Collins thought he got nicked in the arm, thought it could have been a foul call, and a couple free throws. Buchanan, feed inside, a little hook. William McNair wide open. I love the pass from Sean Buchanan right there, threading the defense, putting it right into the hands of his big man. That was an impressive feed. He stayed with the ball up over his left shoulder, and then just catapulted it right into the hands of Will McNair. Taking another look at it. Look at this ball go straight through the defense in a couple white jerseys. And that set up the big man for success. And McNair, all he had to do was just kiss it off the glass and put it in the bottom of the net. Wow, who was that? Brett Favre? Yeah, that was an impressive pass. Looked like a quarterback weaving through the defense. I like it. Well, let's talk about the way the Aggies are playing. All of a sudden, they're up by three. Just a moment ago, it was a five-point deficit, and they looked like they were kind of climbing uphill. But right now, they're kind of at the top of the mountain looking down. But this is going to be a back-and-forth game, I think. Yeah, that's what an 11-2 run will do. They've held South Florida scoreless for the past three minutes and three seconds. The Bulls just one of seven in their last seven attempts. Trailing by three and talked about it earlier. Two teams that came from different directions in their game yesterday. South Florida quickly was down to Loyola, eight to nothing right at the beginning of that one. And then turning back around and they finished off the comeback, whereas New Mexico State was up by as much as 16 against Colorado State. Ended up taking overtime to get them here to the semifinal, but they actually closed the deal in OT. Castaneda feeds Rideau. Rideau on Rice, a good defender. This is Brown. That's a two ball, and it's off the mark, and Rice going to get the rebound. Oh, 
McCants looking in. We'll see what the Aggies do here on offense. They prefer to run, but they're a good setup team as well. Here's McCants with 12 to shoot. Brown with a triple, got it! Terrell Brown from downtown. He knew it was good as soon as it left his fingertips. He felt it coming around a screen, used a pick right up at the top of the key. Had about two steps on his defenders, caught the pass from Buchanan, another big assist from the senior leader, and then drained it from deep. Good feed inside, throwing it down, Michael Durr. A little bit of an exclamation point from Durr. Just a second bucket of the game, but he's had some open looks. They continue to try and feed the rock to him down low. Fun game here so far. Don't expect that to change anytime soon either. And there's another bucket for New Mexico State this time. It's Johnny McCants. One of these teams playing for a trophy tomorrow. You can see the intensity, even as early as it is, still Plenty of game to play. Dawson gets it in, and they score the bucket. Love the ball movement there from the Bulls. Did not let up, kept the foot on the gas, and because of that, able to drive around and kind of work that New Mexico State defense open. Good fee, but unable to finish. McNair was knocked away from him out of bounds. That was a massive block from Durr coming from behind and surprising McNair. McNair didn't even know Burr, Brown was, or Durr, excuse me, was even there. And Durr comes in with a rejection. South Florida still trailing by four here from the Cayman Islands as they continue to make a run. Chris Stans talking to his team, his team with a four-point lead here, 22 to 18. Scott Galletti along with Kyle Yeomans. What are you seeing right now, Kyle? Well, I'm looking at bench points for New Mexico State. 10 to nothing, they lead it in that column. South Florida has not had a single point come off of their bench, and that's a testament to what Chris Jans has done in terms of building the depth for the Aggies of New Mexico State. We saw it yesterday. South Florida was actually outscored bench-wise in their win against Loyola, but with that being said, they're gonna have to find some sort of rhythm here, whether it's with guys like Brown or even Collins. I know those are starters, but they've gotta find a way to get those guys going a little bit. Rito can't do it all. He leads the way with five points. Collins has four, Durr has four. Durr having a great game though. Just in eight minutes, he's got four points, four rebounds, and a block. That last block was as emphatic as they come. That's what sets us up on the baseline. Well, he's one of those guys, you see him in your screen, just making things happen and forcing the opponent to make things happen and making it tough on him. Shot clock down to four. Rice outside, has to hurry, tried to get it to Aure Koichea, and it's a 30 second shot clock violation. You know, the Aggies had some trouble with that yesterday, Kyle, as a lot of times we would hear the crowd saying 5-4-3-2-1, and 
That's one of the teams that goes late into the clock in their set offense. Yeah, normally you don't see that in coming out of a timeout especially, and even some confusion here on the defensive end. It looked like Rice just didn't see the clock, and then he had some trouble after talking to the coaches as well. Yeah, once he realized what the clock was, the defense really clamped it down on him. Chris Jans is livid right out in front of his bench. That he might not have liked what we were seeing. No. He walked away. I don't <laughs> see that right now. He is uh, he is not happy with his squad. Lots of confusion coming out of the timeout, not executing the way that they're normally used to executing. Free throw miss, 22 to 19. Free throw make, excuse me. 22 to 19, Castaneda, one more coming. And makes them both. So it's a two point lead. Have a loud fan base for both teams, I like it. Yeah, South Florida brings the, the juice in terms of the intensity and the fan base. Saw a couple Bulls faithful in the building. Here's Williams for three off the side of the rim and the rebound grabbed by South Florida. Dawson the other way. Collins couldn't get that triple. New Mexico stay with the ball. C.J. Bobbitt got the rebound. We haven't called his name a lot here today so far. No, and he didn't really have the best game yesterday either. You expected him to really touch the ball a lot and really be in the thick of things, but he's been more of an assisting role today. Saw that yesterday whenever his shots just didn't fall early. Ore Koche gives the ball to Williams. Rice for three. Another big rebound by Durr. I love the rotation from South Florida during that possession. It didn't matter who had the ball for New Mexico State. They had a Bulls player right in their face. Here comes Williams on a steal, a two on two. He's going to take it all the way himself and scores. Coast to coast for Williams. New Mexico State now with a dozen points in the paint, backing off that low block. Nice job by Williams off balance. He's tied for the team lead with five points to his total. Coaches really barking out instructions here. Three ball, Castaneda off the mark and the rebound grabbed by Rice. He traveled. At first, it looked like it was going to be a foul. They called a walk. Yeah, lots of contact there, and he fell to the floor, and that's when he was called for the travel. A rash of substitutions on both sides before the inbound pass. Still a 12-0 advantage for bench points in favor of New Mexico State so far. Here comes South Florida now with the ball. Down by four. 4.08 to play, shot clock to 16. Good movement, they get it to Castaneda. Too strong on the triple and the loose ball foul. That's an easy one to call as that will go against Jameer Chaplin. Chaplin out of Norcross, Georgia. He's a freshman, 6'5", 170. Timeout on the court. We've got four minutes to play in the first half. It is the Aggies of New Mexico State, 24 to 20 over South Florida. First built in 1780, Pedro St. James was the largest building in the island's then capital of Bodden Town. Now a national historic site where you can explore seven beautifully landscaped acres, stunning ocean views, artifacts, and a multi-sensory 3D movie show that will transport you back in time. Unwind, reconnect, and discover 65 acres of tropical landscape. Explore the heritage house, garden, and medicinal patch, and learn how Caymanian people lived in days of old. In West Bay, you'll find a site consisting of rugged blackened limestone almost 15 million years old, and it's named Hell. And there's a post office where you can mail a postcard with a hell postmark to prove you've been to hell and back. Cayman Craft Market brings together visitors and the local artisans who create and display unique Caymanian art. Here you'll 
find items made from leather, thatch, wood, shell, caimanite, and black coral. And you'll be able to see local artisans at work making crafts from the local materials. Four point lead for New Mexico State over South Florida. And the Aggies have gotten into a pretty good rhythm, although South Florida is very capable of stopping a rhythm on a dime. Yeah, that defense for South Florida has been really the uh, the tough part for opponents all year long. Now, New Mexico State doing a good job of holding on to the basketball. Just four turnovers here in this first half with four minutes to go. But you do want to. Take a note that there were only six turnovers against this Bulls defense heading into halftime yesterday. And all of a sudden, they found a bevy of turnovers, 20 against Loyola Chicago in the second half of that win. Shot in the corner by Bobbitt, trying to get on track here, couldn't do it. And a rebound, Castaneda, 24 to 20 in favor of New Mexico State, down to 340 on the clock. Both teams, because of the defense of the other, needing to be patient here. Jameer Chaplin. It's not quite the pace that we saw in that Loyola and Colorado State game earlier. Loose ball foul is going to be called on South Florida. Not liking to call Jameer Chaplin, but he was out of position. Yeah, if you're out of position, you're going to get called for that the majority of the time. Because of that, the bonus now in favor of New Mexico State. Let's see what they can do free throw wise. Two of three so far yesterday in the matchup with Colorado State. And they definitely took advantage of free throws. 14 of 16 from the line for the Aggies. Taking the freebies and taking advantage. Couldn't take advantage there. The miss by Williams and a rebound South Florida. So. Just like it never happened right there, and back come the Bulls. We'll see what they can do right here. Casting eight on a double team. Collins. Casting eight pulling up. Marasevich got the rebound. He is tied up, and that's going to be a hell ball. Good defense by Buchanan. And the arrow going the way of the Aggies and Buchanan really feeling it as you see it on your screen there. He was just jumping around. We're in the wrong country, but he looked like a kangaroo there. <laughs> there were I wish I had hops like that. 100%, but <laughs> there was a lot of grabbing there. He thought he was fouled, and I could see what Casey has there, but that New Mexico State defense was pestering all possession long they were all over the place the zone worked out well for the Aggies and it ends up in that jump ball Sean Buchanan out of Durant Mississippi just methodical in the lane tied up has to get out of the lane and did he gets a give and go lays it up short Aureko Chad tried to get the rebound and McCants does and scores Johnny McCants out of Oñate High School in Las Cruces, New Mexico, was an outstanding high school player, and he's getting it done here. As you look at the fight, he finally got the ball maneuvered and put it back. Foul call on the floor was up and good. Now, Brian Gregory is really having his way with the officials on that baseline, and now they're talking things over with Chris Jans. Yeah, Eric Curry talking with Chris Jans, John Higgins, Eric Curry, and Tony Green, the officiating crew. So no basket, or is it going to be a basket? No, I think they're going to say no basket. Well, he, he oh. said no basket. He said wave it off, but then he pointed, like, put it down. So a little confusing there. Now you're saying yes, Baxter. I think he's saying no foul on the play, so but they thought at the bench and at the scorer's table they meant no basket. They didn't put it on the board, but now they do. And it's 26 to 20. 
Very interesting turn of events there. And now, on the other end, you've got a push off the ball. David Collins called for the foul. And with all the confusion, South Florida really needs to gather themselves. Collins pulled out of the game. That's his second personal. A little early to be getting in the two or three range, and they're going to need him in the second half. They're going to remain in this ball game, so they take him out just for safe measure. Pass in the corner. McCants for three. He is two for two from three-point range. That's another selfless setup by Sean Buchanan. Had an open lane to the bucket, really easily could have taken the shot himself. Now he turns it over the other end. Buchanan on another steal will come the other way for New Mexico State. 29 to 20, down to a minute and a half. McCants feeling it. Here's Williams, long range. That is off the mark. Metasevich got the rebound for South Florida, and the Bulls will come back. There's Castaneda on the wing. Long range three, that is off the mark. Taking that was Justin Brown from downtown. Couldn't get it, Buchanan the other way with 53 seconds. And it's stripped away, Metasevich got it. And we've seen defense galore in this ball game for both sides. It's kind of what we expected going in. We thought the guards would have a little bit more success than they've had, but these defenses are having a heyday. 38 seconds, Matasevich inside, and travel's going to be called. The referee on the baseline was about to call a foul, <laughs> right. but that was the right call. The yep. referee on the near sideline saw the feet moving a little bit for Maricevic. And because of that, the travel called prior to what would have been the foul, and it's going to be New Mexico State ball following a quick 30-second timeout. So now New Mexico State with the shot clock separating by the game clock of three seconds may have a chance for either a final shot or to at least run into the break with a three-possession or four-possession lead. And the question is, how do they do it? Do they keep with the three-pointer? Do they go inside? What's their first pick? Uh, the three ball's been working. Five of 12. You got more than half of your points coming from beyond the arc. But you also look at the, the personnel on the other side. Marisovic has been susceptible down low defensively. Now, if Durr checks into the ball game for USF, I wouldn't necessarily want to challenge the talented sophomore down low. I think if you're New Mexico State, you put the ball into the hands of Buchanan, let him bring it down the floor if he's on the floor. It doesn't look like he's even going to be a part of the personnel, so they're going to bring it down the floor, maybe set something up for Jabari Rice, maybe McCants. Good amount of the second unit in the ball game for New Mexico State right now. Aggies with the ball, Terrell Brown out of Hayward, California. McCants. Game clock down to 18, Jabari Rice. Dawson on Rice. Game clock is down to 10 as it counts down. Rice gets free for a three, got it! <laughs> Steaming Rice again. And there is a buzzer beater just missed as they stole the ball, threw it up, and that is the end of a good first half for New Mexico State. They are up by 12 here at halftime. Somebody called James Harden. It's cease and desist time because just like that, Jabari Rice steps back and drains it from the extended wing. A brilliant look from the very talented redshirt sophomore out of Houston, Texas. He's seen that a couple times up close with Harden, decides to emulate it himself, and he puts it up to a dozen point lead for the Aggies heading into the break. There's your halftime score, more in a moment. Cayman Islands Classic on Flow Sports.